welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. It is your girl, Sammy, and on this channel, we do DIYs, wood signs, we do upcycles, and there's always tons and tons of laughter. So if that's something that you're into, then keep on watching. Okay, you guys. So we are going to spend this video working on with, I should say, these IOD crockery stamps. My girl, Vonda, from the Painted Heirloom dot com she sent me these among the um what do you call this ink pad with the ink and she also sent me some other goodies which i will use in a later video but today we are focusing on the crockery stamps um i have been wanting these for so long and bonda was so amazing and sent these to me so that i could try them out again i will leave her website down below along with a coupon code for you and just know that if anything is sold out she will get them back in stock when iod gets them back in stock okay so i just wanted to i know it's kind of hard to see but these are the crockery stamps so they say things like marmalade uh lemon curd there's orange marmalade um let's see potted meats uh, there's a bunch of different stuff. So we are literally gonna be putting these on a little bit of everything today. And we are going to start with some ceramic coasters. So let's get started. All right, you guys. So I've had these ceramic coasters for quite some time. So they had a little bit of marks on them. So I decided to go in with Cashew by Waverly. I coat the fronts and then I coat the sides. I do not worry about the bottoms of these. I'm going to go ahead and let those dry. Then I am going to take our stamps. So these stamps, you have to rough them up with 220 grit sandpaper. They say to do this so they don't like slide around on you. And then I'm going to take my ink pad. So the ink pad, this is the easiest way I've found to put the ink onto the stamp. Um, you can see that it is on like a clear film. This helps you hold the piece and it also helps you identify what stamp <laughs> is what. So as you can see, I, ooh, look at how pretty that is. I am at all times holding the stamp down with one hand while the other hand is kind of like rubbing it in here. And right here you can see I am just cleaning it off with a baby wipe and then setting it um, to the side to dry. So again, applying our ink right there. I'm holding it with one hand, pressing it down with the other, and then I'll alternate hands and do the same thing. And then I will go ahead and I will pick it up. Ah, look at how cute those are. I love them. And then of course, I'm gonna clean everyone off as I go. Um, sorry, you guys. These IOD, these are the IOD ink pads so you can get these as well you could also get the ink in different colors and um yeah i am i was really impressed i was really excited to use them i thought that they were very easy to use i mean of course i'm doing this on a flat service so they're easy but the outcome y'all is absolutely beautiful so after those dry i let them dry overnight i Again, this is my first time using them, so I didn't know how long to let the ink dry. So now I'm taking Antique Wax by Waverly. I'm gonna do the edges, and then I kind of rub it in to the inside, like onto the graphic. I'm just trying to give all of these, you'll see, are gonna be like kind of shabby chic. I wanted them to look super old and worn, almost like the paint was starting to discolor over time, you know? So this is just a stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I am just using a paper towel and I am giving them a good coat on the sides. As you can see, I apply it to the sides too because we don't want those sides bright. That would look weird. All right, so after I'm done, or what am I doing? Let's see, I'm showing you more of this because I don't think you get the point. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this. So IOD stamp pads come blank and then you can purchase any color ink you want so i'm using stone gray and then i forgot what the blue is called you guys i'll, I'll look it up it's well i'll look 
on the ink and then they have black so right here i'm filling the stone gray and the blue pad up so you don't just have to be stuck with black ink you can use all different colors i've seen people even use like chalk paint on them so i just wanted to show you this is how you fill up your ink pads now that i am done with the antique wax i let them dry apply some polyacrylic to these these uh, polyacrylic is food safe, not that you're going to be using this with food, but <laughs> I just wanted to make sure to have a protective coat over the ink in case a drink sweats or whatever. And this ink wasn't moving anywhere once I applied the clear, like it did not smear or go anywhere. So I was really happy with that. I'm going to apply that to all four of our coasters. I did do two coats on each. And y'all, that is all for these coasters. Look at how beautiful these turned out. Look at how detailed these stamps are. These come in um, with 12 different stamps on them, y'all. Like, I was so impressed with how these turned out. Let me know what you think about them down in the comments. All right, y'all, that was the first DIY using our IOD crockery stamps. Now, like I said, I am just trying these out. These are my first time using them. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try them on like a little bit of everything. I'm going to try the colors. I'm going to try all the stamps and just kind of see what we can do with them, what kind of surfaces we can put them on. So although I don't know, maybe they seem like generic to some people, I am just trying these out for the first time, like I already said. So, um, I was just kind of going with it and trying a little mix of this and that. Um, like I said, I will leave the link for um, Vonda's website down in the description box if you want to grab some of these IOD stamps. You can also check the IOD website to find a local retailer as well. So um, we are going to keep on going on with these because I still have so many amazing projects to show you guys. I hope you guys are digging this video and you all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're di digging the DIYs, then make sure you like and make sure you subscribe. And y'all, please help your girl out and head over to my other channel, Shop with Sammy, link also down in the description box, and um, go over there and subscribe. I don't just do Dollar Tree hauls. I'm also going to be doing all of my thrift store, garage sale, all of my hauls are going to be over there. So if you're not into the Dollar Tree stuff, then you will also find the thrifting hauls there as well. So help your girl out. Click the link down in the description box and go subscribe to my Shop with Sammy channel. And with that said, let's go ahead and get back into these DIYs. All right, for our next one, we're doing pumpkins. Yes, I know you're probably over pumpkins, but it's my channel, my choice, okay? So I had to do these pumpkins. I had a vision and I was going with it. So I cut these down to size, one smaller, one bigger, <laughs> hashtag Oppie. And I am going to paint the smaller one with Cashew by Waverly. I am gonna hit the, and then the bigger one with White by Waverly. And I do make sure to coat the top, the bottom, the sides, the back, everything, because these are gonna be freestanding little pumpkins. After we're done doing that, I go ahead and size up my stamps. And again, you guys, these come with 12 different stamps on them and they're reusable. So it is definitely worth the money because you can use these over and over and over again and in so many different ways. So for this one, I think this was probably my favorite stamp because I feel like I use it a lot. And it's the creamery one or pure thick cream, it says. And then there's like a picture of a cow on it. All right, then I find a stamp for our white pumpkin here, apply that. I'm just eyeballing all of this and it works. It works for me. All right, so after that's done, we're gonna go ahead and then take, you guessed it, you guys, you're gonna see a trend, Antique Wax by Waverly, white and cashew in this video. All right, so I hit it with some um, Antique Wax, but then I end up going in and giving it a much heavier coat on the tops and the bottoms. And once you get your paper towel and you rub them in, it really looks like distressed wood, like the paint was pulling away from the wood. I loved the look. I did this as well with our small pumpkin too. 
did make sure to hit the top just because I wanted it to look cohesive. I love the way these turned out, you guys. These are probably my favorite and I'm definitely keeping these for myself, for myself. Oh goodness gracious. Anywho, back to the project. Okay, so now that I'm done with that, I grab some spindles, I cut them down to size and these are gonna be our stems. Ah, oh, isn't that so cute? Okay, so I am taking my Surebonder um, super glue, attaching that to the top. Like I said, you guys, this glue, this spindle ain't going nowhere if it drops. Um, so attaching both of those to the top, then I'm gonna grab some raffia. And with the raffia, I am literally just bundling it together. And then I'm going to take another piece of raffia and tie it in the middle. That's it. I thought I was gonna use the lace for these, but decided against it. All right, so I am just taking that raffia. I'm gonna hot glue it to the front of my spindle. Then what do I do? All right, then I'm going to take these flowers. Um, a lot of the solo wood flowers I was finding at Dollar Tree, but um, you can use anything you want, you guys. Felt flowers, you could get paper flowers from any of your craft stores. So those are some other options as well. So I attach two of those to the top. And then I do the same exact thing for the cashew one. I attach raffia, I find some flowers I wanna use, and then I attach those to the front of them as well. You can even use like, um, like crystals or per ooh, pearls would have been so pretty, even in the middle of the flowers. Oh, I might have to add those. And let me show you how these turned out. If you can't hear the smile of my voice, I'm smiling. Look at how gorgeous these turned out. Like the detail of the spindles, it's the little things, you guys, the little things that add so much to a piece. Oh, I love those. I love them. Let me know if you're gonna be making some. Okay, you guys, so our next set of DIYs, we got a lot of them in this video. I'm gonna use the bamboo boards from Dollar Tree. We're gonna go ahead and cut this baby open. And you could use like just regular wood, like one by eights, one by sixes, possibilities are endless. Then I'm going to, again, I'm gonna do one in white and one in cashew. And I am just doing a messy like paint job on these. Now I do hit the sides, but I don't do the bottom. And I don't know why I didn't do the bottom because y'all y'all know that I always love myself a finished product, but I don't, I don't know why I did it. Anyways, I wish I would have done the bottom. So now I'm gonna do, what do people call these? The grain, grain sack stripes? So, something like that. You guys, I saw it on YouTube, so I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just eyeballing and spacing these out. I'm going to take Still Gray by Waverly. I'm gonna give that a coat. And essentially we're just creating stripes. I'm gonna dry those down, pull up our painter's tape, and you have some beautiful straight stripes right in the middle. Now I am going to take my, um, sorry, I'm gonna take my stamp. I think I'm using the blue, which is absolutely gorgeous, okay? I'm using the blue stamp for this one. And then again, just press it down, and then I put the whole dang board in the ink. And let me tell you guys, I had to sand that down because that ink does not come off. No, it does not. So here I go, pressing it down, holding it with one hand, pressing it in with the other, and then I will lift that up. Look at that blue, mm-hmm, yes ma'am. And then, of course, I clean it off with my baby wipe. So now I'm taking these. These are called finials, finial toppers, or something like that. I got them, they're an eight pack at Walmart. They're actually by the bra uh, brand Plaid, and uh, it comes with eight four bigger ones, four smaller ones. So I'm distressing them with white. I am going to set them on our riser here and then apply our star bond to our little legs. And you guys, I like picked this up and dropped it just to make sure it was secure. And this was not moving anywhere. You can definitely take your nail gun if you wanted to and put some small nails through the top, but I was feeling super confident that these would be a-okay if somebody happened to drop them. And then of course we got to touch up. See, I feel like it looks unfinished because the bottom isn't finished, even though it's nice. I don't know. 
Okay, so I just wanted to show you, I'm literally doing the same exact thing, but taking cashew, painting the front, the back, and then at first I thought I was gonna do like a book page cover, and I don't know, it didn't happen. So gonna paint some white stripes on this one. I do sand this down to distress it a bit. Then I'm gonna take the gray ink for this one. This is what's fun, you guys, with the different color inks and stuff, you could really like change them up. You can make it fit your decor. Um, so yeah, I really liked the gray color with this cream and the white together. There we go. And it's not like a stark black, you know? So here we go, you guys. Can't wait to show you these little risers. They were so darn easy to make. I am going to put these in my booth for sale and I hope everybody loves them as much as I do. Look at that blue. Isn't that gorgeous and all that detail in the stamps? Oh, I love them. All right, this next one, you guys, I figured everybody has like some kind of pots in their house, the terracotta pots. I actually found this one at a thrift store and it was the Hearth, Hearth and Hands. You know, you know, Joanna Gaines brand. Yeah, I found this at the thrift store. So I wanted to update it just a little bit. So I cleaned off the pot itself, took the sticker off. Well, then I noticed it had the weirdest bright like leaves in a few spots, almost like they were like bleached by the sun. I don't know. There was like three of them. So I took those off, move around the leaves, make it look, you know, nicer, clean the leaves off, all of that stuff. I know you guys have a pot you can do this with, okay? So after I'm done with all of that, I'm gonna grab white wax by DIY. I get this from my girl upcycledbybree.com. I will leave her link down in the description box for you. And I am taking my wax brush by Waverly and you'll see um, I'm rubbing this in with my brush and then I do this by sections. Then I get my paper towel and I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm taking the excess off, okay? That's what I'm doing here. Um, you can mix this with clear wax and it could be even lighter. So that's another option if you don't like this so white like I'm doing. Um, but I'm gonna do this all the way around our pot. I love the way that this comes out, by the way. And this one, you guys, I attempt with the stamp on like on the plastic backing. You'll see what I mean later in the video, but people say that it's really hard to apply these to rounded surfaces, which IOD on YouTube does do great tutorials on it. I will leave their channel link down in the description box for you. And although I didn't get it perfect, I still think it looked good because it came out, you know, like distressed, old, like the label was, you know, wearing off of the pot. So although it didn't completely turn up, I was really happy with the way that it looked. It just updated this pot so much for me and it's definitely staying in my house. All right, you guys, so this one I saw uh, Teresa from Our Green Acres. I will leave her channel down in the description box. I saw her make some of these and I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to try this. So I am taking a Dollar Tree tote bags here. I'm gonna do two total and I am cutting the back off because I just want the plain side of our tote bag. I'm taking our pizza pan, tracing them out, and then I will cut that circle out. Now you can use sweaters, you could use um, tea towels. I mean, you could seriously use anything. This, I liked the color of it, so that's why I was like, ooh, the tote bag is gonna work perfectly. Then taking a pillow from Wally World, I am gonna use the uh, polyfill out of that. I think it's more cost effective that way too. Anyways, I'm gonna take a grocery bag. You're gonna have to play around with the size here. You're gonna have to like take some out, put some in, take some out. It took me a little bit here, but I, it looks easier than it is because you have to keep playing around with it. But once I find the size, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tie a knot in my grocery bag and then we are going to gather up our fabric here. This is what was like hard. It was like, oh my gosh, come on, get in there. There we go. All right, gathering it up. 
Then I'm going to take some Dollar Tree twine, easy peasy, right? We're gonna tie that around the neck of our pumpkin. I'm gonna double knot that, make sure it is good and tight. I mean, it's so tight I even broke, yep, there we go, part of the twine off. I'm so strong. All right, so now I'm gonna do these stamps. So this is what Teresa on Green Acres does, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to try that. So I'm gonna lay it on the pumpkin, and then we are just simply going to press down, and this will flatten out the pumpkin and allow us to kind of like press in that stamp and look it. I mean, this came out so clean and so good. I was pretty shook by it. So then I add some of that lace that I didn't use from our wood pumpkins. I grabbed some more of the flowers and then I'm going to hot glue that onto this pumpkin. So cute. No, I do the flower and then I end up making a finger bow with some twine because the second flower just was not working for me. So I thought, you know what, we could still make this shabby chic and rustic by adding some twine. Twine fixes everything, okay? So anywho, here we go. I'm gonna wrap that around. I do it quite a few times. Then I am going to, you could see, it's like nice and it's full and it's so cute. And then I just put it at an angle so it fits well with our flower. And then our second one, you guys, again, I do the same thing, cut it out, fill it. Then I, I ran out of grocery bags. How does somebody run out of grocery bags? So I use a um, lunch bag. Okay, I put the polyfill and then I have this beautiful spindle that I'm like, oh my gosh, it's gonna work so perfect for a stem. So I put that spindle in there, gather up our fabric, then I'm gonna take the twine once again. We'll go ahead and tie that around the neck of our fabric and our spindle. Then I just kind of gather some twine up. I just wanted them to kind of like hang down, nothing special, no fancy bow or anything. Tie that off in the middle and I'm gonna attach that with some hot glue to the front of my pumpkin. Well, no, first I do the stamp, I believe. Okay, so then I take the stamp again. I'm gonna lay it down. I'm gonna place it, then flatten it out and press that stamp. I used gray with this one. Oh, these look so dang cute. Goodness gracious. And then of course, I was missing some fabric. So I had to tie it again. That's gonna happen, right? Uh, this would look so cute with like these striped fabrics, like with these. Oh, so cute. All right, so now I'm just adding my little details. I put some thicker jute cord on and then kind of like unravel it so it looks frayed and more full. And after that, I am going to, I believe, add some flowers. Yes, here are my Dollar Tree Sola wood flowers. I do two, two, three, three. I think I do three. And y'all, let me know if you're gonna make these. And again, I will uh, attach our Green Acres channel down in the description box for you, but look at how stinking cute. The spindle one is, of course, my favorite. And look at that blue on this fabric. How gorgeous is that? Oh my gosh, I love these. <laughs> I love this whole video. Okay, these are the last ones. So because everybody was saying it was so hard to transfer these onto rounded surfaces, I decided I would try the tissue paper technique. So all you do is take white tissue paper, or you can take any color you want, and you are going to apply your stamps to the tissue paper. Now, I let mine set overnight for 24 hours or just overnight, I don't know how long it was, because I wasn't sure about like how long you should wait because I didn't want them obviously to smear. I've heard people say 30 minutes. I've heard people say you could spritz them with hairspray. So you do you, I let it dry overnight. Okay, so now I am taking some Rust-Oleum chalk paint. We are gonna do our like kind of faux concrete, we could just call it like textured paint. That's what we'll call it. And I'm taking my chalk paint, I'm taking my baking soda, and just remember the more baking soda you put in, the more texture you are going to get. So I ended up spray painting all of my pieces white. I did this because some of them were in color, 
And you also want to coat them with something so that you have something for the paint to attach to. So usually I use like clear Rust-Oleum or clear Krylon, and then I will put my mixture on here. So I do do two coats, letting it dry in between coats. After I am done um, painting all of my containers, I then, um, so, okay, you guys. So I tried this out and I thought it was so cool. So everybody said it was so hard to put these on rounded surfaces. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna tape this stamp down on my mat and then I'm gonna try rolling this, okay? So right here I'm like, ooh, is it gonna work? Okay, so then I apply the ink and you can see like the stamp ain't going nowhere. So I just have to make sure that I have a lot of control over how I'm rolling my glass piece. So you guys, I just roll it over and this turns out so good. Look at that. It turned out like perfect. So I was like, yes, ma'am, I'm gonna do that again. Okay, but we had all these other pieces, so let's try it. So I'm taking water on a paintbrush. Crafted by Corey actually does this very often. So I thought, you know what, I'll try it. So she puts it around the, I put it around the stamp. And then this helps just kind of tear out your image without, one, if you use scissors, you'd have like some clean cuts, but I didn't want clean cuts. And I also didn't want to rip my stamp. So coating it with water around it helps you tear it easy. And then you get like those little, like the tear look. <laughs> that did not sound right. Okay, so now we're gonna apply it to our bottle. I'm gonna take some Mod Podge. I am going to apply that to the back of the tissue paper. Then I'm going to set it on my piece, my glass piece right here, rub that in. Now I'm gonna take the Mod Podge and I'm only putting it over my stamp. I am not gonna rub it like all messy and try to coat it because we all know even though Mod Podge says matte, it doesn't come out matte. There's always kind of like some sheen to it. So I am focusing on just covering the stamp itself. So again, do the same thing with all of my bottles, apply Mod Podge to the back of the tissue paper and then only to the front of the stamp itself, nothing more. All right, so after I'm done doing this one, this one I think ended up being my favorite. I'm not sure. It was like a kitchen utensil holder thing. But um, again, doing the same thing. I thought, you guys, these are so fun. Let me know in the comments what you think about all these stamps. And there's so much more. This is just what I could get done. That's why this video is so long because I wanted to show you everything. All right, now taking Antique Wax by Waverly and my stencil brush, I'm gonna go around my stamp here and I'm kind of going heavy with this. Then I'm going to take my um, a paper towel and I'm basically, I guess, rubbing it in. I mean, you could say rubbing it off, but it's more like rubbing it in. Then with whatever excess I have on my brush, I am going to dry brush that on. Like seriously, it's the lightest coat you can have on here. I just wanted it all to look cohesive. So you guys, I'm gonna show you what I did with each one of the jars and then show you the final look at the end. So with our next one, I am just taking the antique wax and I am placing it on the bottom. Again, I'm doing a heavier coat here all the way around, then I'll take my paper towel and I'll rub that in. Now I've seen people like mix the antique, antique wax with water and do this, you can use really any color wax that you want because you can mix wax with any color. All right, then again, taking and dry brushing all around so it's cohesive. For this next one, I am hitting every part of the raised glass with heavy antique wax, okay? I And then I will rub it down with the paper towel. And the reason I did this is because I want all of the details of my glass pieces to, to really pop out at you. So you'll see anywhere that the glass is raised is where I'm hitting it really hard with that antique wax. Now this is just my preference, but I think it it really turned out looking good. And then everything in between, I just kind of dry brushed and rubbed in with my paper towel. Now this one, you guys, turned out 
so good. So again, taking the antique wax, I'm using the remainder of whatever's on the brush to do like the in-between surfaces. I rub it off. I know it's very repetitive, but I felt the need to show you this one because it looked so darn cool. So I'm gonna continue to do that around the bottom of the bottle. And then when I get to the middle of the bottle is when I'm like, oh man, this is coming together real good. So you could see any of the raised edges on this glass vase, I don't even know what this is, bottle, is where I hit heavy and then I go in with like the excess and I rub it in. But you can see how it starts framing out this bottle and just really making that label pop out at you. And you guys, this is how all of them turned out. Let me know which one out of the four of these are your favorite. So that one on the left was done with gray the blue, and then the two in the back, I believe are with the black ink, but they all tell their own little story. I absolutely love them. You guys remember Vonda's website for these stamps will be down in the description box as well as a discount code. And I thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. I absolutely appreciate y'all and I hope you have an amazing weekend. Bye. I went home the sun yesterday. <laughs> Does it show? I got a new sports bra. It's actually white now instead of brown. Oh, no. Mommy has to see what? <laughs> oh, that looks so good, Daddy. <laughs> You guys are silly. Alright, let's do this. Got my inner dish. Okay. Maybe so we don't see. I really need to change the background. I'm gonna do like a background haul or a makeover. <sighs> too bright. I feel like <coughs> too plain, but you can't hang anything on this, really. I should have turned this around the other way so the slats I could actually hang. That would have been not ideal. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, that was pretty dang good. All right. All right. I don't mean to do that, but I'm trying not to get this lipstick all over.